so we're here at Tiger 21, mm -hmm. um, and I'm interested to learn how you got involved in this in this fantastic program. Who, how did, what was your first contact with Tiger 21? Uh, interestingly enough, my first contact came through somebody at the office who was using LinkedIn to look oh, for you to look for people, and uh, they reached out to me, and uh, and then I found out that I had some uh, friends who had been in Tiger 21, although I'd never known about it, and. I looked into what they were doing. And for me, I was just getting to the point where I was setting up family office and I was worried about the issues of how do I get my grandchildren and my children uh, involved in, all, in, in this yeah. and dealing with the wealth, although they've actually done quite well. My middle daughter is now the treasurer at Goldman Sachs. She's got some family wealth. My oldest daughter has some family wealth uh, of her own through her husband and his hedge fund and her work at McKinsey. But I was worried about those issues. and wanted to find a place to talk about it. And I also knew that my fortune was in technology and I had to diversify and wanted to find some hints on how to do that. So I, I went to a meeting and I said, hmm, it's kind of interesting. And I really liked it. And then I went to uh, join the group in New York and the people there were just diverse, interesting, and they all had a story. And the, the fact that we had this intimate setting, completely confidential, where we could you know, bear our financial souls and, and some other parts of our souls as well. Sure. Uh, really, really resonated with me. Well, I mean, talk about, because there'll be people, I've, I've mm -hmm. spoken to Michael Sonfold, obviously, yeah. the, the founder of Tiger 21, um, but talk a little bit about what, what a typical meeting, yeah. what it's like, because people will be hearing sure. about this and not understand how well, it works. Well, you know, we start our meetings with, with a little bit of uh, what's happened to us, you know, have we made some new investments, uh, what's happened to our families, and. Uh, we started this year with what our goals for the year were, for example. And then we look at world affairs and world events, uh, what in the macro world could affect us. Uh, and then we'll typically have one or two presentations. So it could be an investment presentation uh, by some investment group. I've never done much real estate. A lot of Tiger members have done real estate. Uh, I had never done any much in three years ago. Now I've started to do that. I've learned about the tax benefits of it and uh, some of the long-term wealth creation benefits of it. So I've really explore, expanded my, my role there. And then we'll have what's called the portfolio defense, where once a year you lay out your entire portfolio with the numbers and the other members take pot shots and they say, you know, gee, you don't have enough insurance. You're, you're too much of a cowboy. I'm, they have a scale from, from sort of cowboy to, to conservative. And I'm right. very close to the edge of the cowboy scale there <laughs> because of all my venture investing and my quant, yeah, sure. quant investing. Uh, and, but, you know, they're, they're, everyone's respectful, but they're saying, gee, you know, you don't have enough of this. They'll look at insurance. You know, do you have insurance to cover estate taxes? Uh, but, and they'll talk about how your portfolio has changed. The criticism this year to me was, you have too many investments. Because, you know, it's, it's what goes on for three pages. Yeah. And it's like, that's just too many for you to manage. How are you going to do that? And I have to start thinking about that. So the, the meetings give you a really good good lesson and schooling in your own behavior, which you often don't hear from anyone else. Well, you know, I've, I've met lots of Tiger 21 members when I've spoken to various chapters around the country. And I mean, they're a remarkable group of people. And, I, and I've been really amazed by the, the openness with which they talk to each other. And you guys, you know everything <laughs> about everybody's, I mean, everybody's lives. It's not just about investment. No. This is about family and lifestyle. And in, in our group, we, we told one member that they had been waiting too long to get the divorce final. They really had to get it done, <laughs> and they did. <laughs> and they thanked us uh, a few months later. They really thanked us for that. So yeah, they, we, do, we do talk about the families. We talk about how do you deal with your sons-in-law. I have three sons-in-law. And with the, one of our other members, uh, he's got a son who's kind of a cowboyish kind of guy. But it's all done in, in a way that everyone knows it's confidential, and you don't, you don't share it outside of the confines of that Tiger meeting. So for this, you know, for you as, as a VC who's who's there to incubate, to help people, and to give them advice in, into Tiger Twenty One, uh, where you, you like-minded people do the same thing for each other. You know, for people that that don't have the wealth to be a member of Tiger Twenty One, for example, or haven't had the success yet, haven't been able to get themselves uh, VC funding. How should they go about thinking about building that network in their own lives? Because it's it's important to have people around you that that you can be open and honest with and can critique you, but do so in a way that's, that's constructive. It's, it's a difficult thing to build. It is. There are organi other organizations for people at different levels in their lives and so on that try to do this. Uh, we, you know, trying to, if you're a private company owner or builder, 
uh, we tell, and I tell my friends this, the, to build a, their own board of directors, if, as it were. Maybe it's their lawyer, maybe a lawyer and an accountant, and some somebody who might be a trustee of an estate for their kids. But you should build a group of people. It's just hard to find the way the tiger does for you, a group of people who you don't have to see every day socially, so you don't feel uh, any, oh, oh, I just told them such and such, yep, you know. Yep. And so you really need that separation which Tiger gives you. Uh, although you do still then become friends with people, but it's not quite the same as uh, as it would be, you know, if you were just taking your best friend and, and bearing your soul. So, uh, so I, I'm going to have to ask you this, and I'll take this inside the meeting. If it's confidential, you can tell me. But, but when you, the last meeting, you talk about the macro views yep. and the things that might affect you guys as members. What's the thing that's uppermost in people's minds at the moment? Well, we have a lot of political stuff, obviously. We yeah. have, my group has, uh, I'd say, 75% uh, 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 Democrats and 25% Republicans, a few of whom are staunch Trump supporters. And yep. that leads to some interesting discussions at times. Uh, I think we're all concerned about the possibility of a recession in the next year and a half, two years, because of the, the, uh, the situation both in America and elsewhere. With, if you look back cyclically at the 30s, you see what happened after yeah, in the Great sure. Depression point, and if you if you believe in these sort of Kondratiev cycles and so on, we're we're in that isolationist piece of the cycle, and it's not a great piece for the world, and it's not a great piece for investment. So you have to become more defensive in your investing policy, and we talked about that.